Hi friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I vlogged moments throughout my two week wait, but there are a little bit of gaps here. So here I am to fill in some of those gaps and walk you through day by day what my symptoms were during my two week wait. I cannot believe I'm doing one of these again. I am walking in an answered prayer for sure. And for any of you still hoping and praying and wishing for that baby of your own and you're still in your trying to conceive journey. I just want to say, because oftentimes you're watching these videos while you're in that journey. So I just want to say and reiterate that encouragement to you. The biggest point of encouragement that I would always come back to is the fact of timing that Every new month means a new life. It means a new baby. It means a new member of your family. And so if you're not conceiving for one month, it just means that your new family member, your new little son or daughter was not meant to come yet and that they are meant to be conceived at a later date. And so try to keep that in mind as much as you can, but I know that it is such a struggle. It's so hard. It really tests you. And I wasn't even walking through the very thick of it with my original journey with Henry. And then with our second time around, we ended up conceiving a lot faster than expected at um, month three. And so it is a really difficult journey for a lot of people. I'm there with you. I'm praying with you, thinking about you. Please reach out and let me know if there's anything in particular that I could be praying or anything specific that I can be praying about for you. So with that in mind, keep your hopes high. I'm thinking about you, praying about you. And this is a really hard, hard thing to go through. So let's actually get into the symptoms of what I was feeling on my two week wait when I conceived baby number two during our third month of trying. So to track ovulation, I use the app Natural Cycle. So I will put what my cycle looked like right here so that you can see all of the data, all of the dips and everything like that. It did predict that I ovulated on cycle day 17. And so we are using that cycle day to now predict my due date. If we would have predicted my due date based on my missed period, it would be November 7th. But because we have that information about the ovulation day, I am using that to predict the due date, which is November 9th. So just a slight little shift there with that knowledge. Leading up to ovulation from about cycle day 14 to 17, I noted that I was feeling ovulation pain on both sides. I was feeling pretty crampy leading up to when I actually ended up ovulating on the 17th. That added a lot of confusion because I wasn't sure if I had already ovulated. The ovulation day was kind of shifting around a little bit and so I usually am a late ovulator. I will usually ovulate I think the average day for me is even cycle day 18. So usually sometime between day 16 and day like 19 is usually when I ovulate. So a little bit on the later end I have on average 30 day cycles. So that kind of tracks with that trend. But on this cycle, I did stick with that and stick with that average and I ovulated on the 17th. So that makes one DPO cycle day 18. I had no symptoms on this day. On two DPO, I had a bit of an upset stomach, which isn't super noteworthy because I do have IBS. So that just kind of happens. But I have noticed with this pregnancy in general, I have had more upset stomachs than I did with Henry, which is just an interesting thing to know because I didn't really have any upset stomachs with Henry. My digestion was really good. But with this one, my stomach has been more upset lately and it really did start from like conception. And so I had an upset stomach and then also Consistent with Henry, super bizarre, super early, early pregnancy symptom is I started having a runny nose. Now, it was bizarre for me because I know that with a cold, for me, it always starts with a sore throat. And so I knew it wasn't a cold. I didn't feel sick. I didn't feel under the weather and I don't get allergies, but I was having such a runny nose and that continued on to three DPO where I just had this profusely running nose, which was really funny because with Henry, one of my bizarre, really early pregnancy symptoms was having a lot of uncontrollable just sneezing. I would just sneeze and sneeze and sneeze and sneeze. And so same thing, a lot of sinus issues, super, super early into conception. Three DPO, I marked that my CM was a little bit more sticky this day. I noticed the consistency change on three DPO from what it was. And there was also anxiety because really, really early on with Henry, I had 
really sore boobs starting very, very early, but I did not have any sore breasts at this point in my cycle. And so this was actually making me think, okay, maybe I'm actually not pregnant. For DPO was pretty unnoteworthy. I was a teeny tiny bit crampy, really, really mild. There was still no sore breasts, did not feel that whatsoever. My seam was still on the sticky side, which can happen leading up to a period. So at this point I'm thinking maybe I'm actually not pregnant. Five DPO, I started having very vivid dreams, which was bizarre to me. And I didn't really think of it as a pregnancy symptoms because the vivid dream portion didn't start with Henry until I was well into the first trimester. But I started having vivid dreams and then continued to have it 6 DPO, 7 DPO for a few days very, very early on. And I didn't really have vivid dreams later on. So it's just interesting how the hormones kind of reacted with my body here. So started having vivid dreams, had a few early wake ups. I woke up on 5 DPO at 4 a.m randomly and just wide awake at 4 a.m. I also had some very, very light cramping on this day as well. And my breast started getting sore on five DPO, but I had also done a workout at my gym that involved bench pressing. So I couldn't tell whether it was the bench pressing, whether it was hormones, I couldn't tell what it was. So I was still very skeptical at this point. Six DPO, the only thing that I noted, which was odd for me, cause I'm not a stomach sleeper, is that I kept on waking up on my stomach. Like I was sleeping on my stomach and waking up on my stomach, which I thought was very strange because I don't ever sleep on my stomach. And so I just noted that as, oh, why am I waking up on my stomach? Why am I sleeping on my stomach? 7 DPO was kind of a continuation of these things. I was having an upset stomach. I was having a runny nose. I was having some very, very, very mild cramping, like almost to the point where it was getting to the, oh, I'm feeling like little tugs, little pulls. And I know that that can be really hard because people say, oh, that's a sign that implantation is happening. But also it is so subtle. It can be something that you just think you're experiencing when you're actually not. So I kind of hesitate saying this one, but very small tugging and pulling on 7DPO. I also noted that I sneezed and I lost bladder control, which was very unusual for me, even though I did have a weaker pelvic floor with Henry, it wasn't as weak to the point where I would cough or sneeze and then have to pee, that didn't really happen. And so the fact that I sneezed and then I peed a bit, I thought was so weird because that usually did not happen. Also after dinner on 7DPO, I started getting waves of nausea, which I thought was bizarre. And also one of those things of, am I just thinking myself into this or is this actually happening? 8DPO, I was waking up throughout the night, just randomly at 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., those early wake-ups that were a bit strange. I felt this kind of bloated feeling on the right side of my uterus, which I thought was also strange considering it was a localized bloating feeling. It wasn't crampy or painful. It just felt full, specifically localized on that right side. And then I also wrote down that I was having neckle pain, which may just had, which may just relate to what I was doing at CrossFit that week. I'm not sure, but I was having pain in my knuckles that day specifically, not past that day. 9DPO, I noticed a very good amount of bloating and I thought to myself, wow, I look 12 weeks pregnant already. Is this just a lot of bloating leading up to a period or am I pregnant right now? It was that whole game happening at 9DPO. Also, I noted that smells were a little bit weird that I had an essential oil running in a bathroom. And one time I walked in, I was like, oh, this smells really bad. And then the second time I walked in, I was like, ooh, why does this smell so good? And so it was kind of like variable smells happening on 9DPO. Okay, 10 DPO, I started feeling very localized, kind of sharp pain, specifically in my nipple area on both sides. It was, oh, I wouldn't actually say sharp, it was more of a dull pain, but very centralized to like the nipple area. I also noticed that my breasts look a little bit fuller on this day. I marked that I had a small hot flash after a walk in the park. So similarity number one is that my sinuses were overactive very early on in the two week wait, right around conception, overactive sinuses. Similarity number two is that there was subtle breast tenderness throughout the two week wait. Similarity number three is the absence of period-like symptoms, primarily in the severity of the crampiness. There was crampiness, but it was way, way, way more mild, like hardly noticeable. 
Similarity number four is that smells were just off. They would be strange, they would change, they would be heightened, but smells just changed. Similarity number five is a craving for spicy food during the two week wait. I wanted everything to be spicy. Spicy chicken mostly, like a spicy chicken sandwich sounded so good both times. I wanted spicy food both two week waits. Similarity number six is that I had minor waves of nausea, but only at night. Later, I would get like morning nausea, specifically if my stomach wasn't full. But during the two week wait, I would only get nausea after dinner or late at night, like right before bed. And then similarity number seven is that I had an overactive digestive system, usually or specifically from around 6 DPO to 10 DPO both times. And then here are the differences. So with baby number one, I did, was not moody during my two week wait. Baby number two, I was very moody. Difference number two is how early the breast tenderness started. With baby number one, started super early. I marked at three DPO. For baby number two, it kind of started a little bit at five DPO, is just when I noticed something, but it, they didn't really feel tender until seven DPO. So way big difference there. I think also the second time around, my breasts are just used to producing milk. And so I don't think as much growth was needed this time around, even though I have fully stopped breastfeeding. I think that the change there just made it so that I was more sensitive the first time around, but who knows. Difference number three is that with this second time, I was really craving lemon in the two week wait. I wanted lemon water. I wanted lemon in an iced tea. I just wanted the flavor lemon all the time. With baby number one, I just craved spicy things. I also craved spicy things this time around, but with the addition of citrus. Difference number four is in the wake up times. So with baby number one, I woke up more in the middle of the night. So it was more of a two or 3 a.m. random wake up call that was happening. With baby number two, it wasn't as often and it was early morning. It was like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. where that was happening. With baby number one, I noticed the smallest of small implantation bleed that happened. It was truly so small, like a teeny little little bit of implantation bleed that happened with baby number one I did not notice any with baby number two so it could have occurred but like I said it was so small I was even surprised I noticed it with baby number one so with baby number two I did not notice any implantation bleeding and then the final difference is that with the second time around tons of bloating so much bloating that was happening with baby number two baby number one there wasn't very much bloating actually in the two-week wait there was no bloating in the two-week wait the bloating would happen later on in the first trimester so those are the similarities and differences of my two pregnancies during the two week wait and the symptoms that I had for this most recent two week wait. I wanna thank you so, so much for watching this video. It means so much to me that you did. If you liked it, please remember to give it a little thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to continue following this pregnancy journey along. I'm so excited to continue sharing these milestones with you and I will catch you on the next video. Bye friends.